Hello, so that succeeded going live and I hope my microphone is working now. Uh, today is a special day uh, where certain synchronic synchronicities matched to this day and the primary one is my uh, flower here. It's about the blossoming of the flower and I have given a promise to the flower on your blossoming day, the full blossoming day, that there will be a, uh, a special event and which match to this auspicious day. So I think I will wish to read a poem for the blossom, which I'm celebrating today. And uh, in various ways of uh, speech or dialogue, I would like to present or suggest the plausibility of such dialogue and the type of the sentiency that has the capacity to pass through, through any objectivity. Thus, I would suggest this movement, the indeterminate movement being one and the same, yet presenting in different paths through different sounds, sensibilities, and uh, in general, at the highest sense of broader sense through sound and image, yet all being one and the same, dance of unity, presenting a totality, the unity and its sound and the forms, the bodies that precipitate, just as this one of the rhythm, along the rhythm of life and an ability the miraculous ability and the joyfulness of being in tune with that. The miraculousness is the blossoming, simple miracle, making in the dualistic sense, the day matching to the auspiciousness of the day. Or yet, who knows that there is this drop that crosses as windows and unites all windows of all dimensions. So I wished to present a pre-written poem today and the synchronicities that matched to this day without any planning. For that, I would also like to show a a suggestion of a program which is not strict but which seems a natural flow of the course in this studio to present it with the physical bodily movement which is in its natural course 
which is um, choreographed, yet which, although is not to be determined by its performance and its performance, still having distinctive elements, which I can say I have been graced by to be able to discern and be able to hear through the repetitions that it arises, initiates, and lets its flow be visible to the inner eye connected with the heart and bring it forth in an meaningful way to a dualistic language. So this has been spontaneously being told this way, which at another time will be read in a different way. Now comes movement one. which suggests the movement of the blossoming, which comes from the installation of curves and repetitions and instances of bodies, which is one, with its sonic formula, which is hearable to the mover who synchronously installs skies by its inner gaze and the eye. This is a part to hear and follow. This is a luminous just as uniting all of the lines as presented in this picture, which has been a drawing of a movement score, yet we see here a unity of a totality. And once the inner eye has been completed, we shall be able to see the completion line and the drop, the point, just as a suggestion here being drawn from far away with matches to the lines of the patterns of the flowering, of the blossom of the full blossom.
That which looks like a dance cannot be told to be so. You may also simply say this to be a clearing. There are no words to that which makes its course. The moment knows itself. So we have nothing to worry about its course. What we do is labelless gazing through the moment, and that's all we do. The form is a sound embodied form whose instances are made of aggregates that are combined in precise amounts within themselves, suggesting a formula or the sonic formula of the total form that are present within the gesticulations of the body that form an indeterminate shapes while the gazing, while the act of gazing, which knows itself, which knows the totality and the formation of the point that which initiated and that which unites at a point. And that is the moment, the instances of bodies form a totality, a combination, a combination that which is complete in itself that also can be seen and tested by the completion of the totality of the inner eye, which matches to the eye itself. This is also being sensed by the mover or performer, if you will, and which within itself has the formula of how the blossoming gets complete synchronously. We can then quote 
everything is an epitome of everything else. And I will get to the next stage of a reading of a poem for the blossom. I actually couldn't let it just to be viewed by myself in my studio and I could not let it go. So it matches today, a full blossoming day. And let me read this very experimental page with rather an unreadable handwriting that flew, however, from the heart of the writer. And I will now try to read with the same intention of the way the movement has formed the letters. So it was not pre-heard and written, but the movement has made the letters flow and take their particular shapes in this page, which hasn't been corrected by me to be a better readable version. So I will improvise on this and see what will come out, just like the way miracle, miraculously today this flower blossoms. When you can see in complete silence the movement of the leaves of the trees towards the sky and hear their song in your heart, you are grateful to them delightfully, breath by breath. You wear this secret sonic suet, drawing instances of your new body by clearing, by clearing away, by clearing away the designations drop by drop. Through the eternity of the gaze, the unity of the gazer, The gazer then passes through. The gazer sees the gazer sees a drawing made by the unity of the leaves irregular shapes of windows and the gazer embodies these windows towards the same sky. They are the gazer's embodied delineations and the sky a thousand 
and one worlds. A thousand and one worlds of the same sky in which creatures respectfully percolate, make secret patterns of protection lines, of sanctuaries one knows deeply. One knows deeply then these are not arbitrary. One knows deeply then only then you see a body, a face to yourself. You can locate this by the gravity that circulates within the very body. Musically, you start directing it with the currents by internalizing all. You know then, you are standing nowhere or everywhere, if you will. So clearing away, clearing away means clearing away thought constructs. Thought constructs are solidities taken for granted. Even one's own body while one own body may be just a fluidity constantly reappearing and reconstructed through names and beliefs, through labels. Labels that cloud the sky of that awareness. So without taking any action, first be and see yourself in the thought that leads you perform the action. Don't take the action until you see yourself in it by seeing the color of the wish, of the desire, by seeing the shape of it, by hearing the sound of it. Every moment is a sound. Every movement is a sound. And you can see this through the body by wearing it as an instance, which means reconstructing the body. You are the one, you are the an echoic chamber that can hear the movement of the objects that are unhearable otherwise to the ear. Only then you see the unmoving, the non-sentient things that have been taken for granted by their labels. You see that the room you're standing in is only a constructed place. You see that by the seeing of the lines and angles through that gazing from the heart, from the sky, from the points of grounds, heart and sky that which unite at one, seeing. Then you laugh, 
love and love. As some kind of a particle, is it? Seeing your color, only then there's no difference between the small and the big. So you jump. Only then you jump. You jump as the fun of it. You dissolve all to your own size as a particle, as a drop. And apply your childhood dream and pass through, pass through objects, objects of gaze. Make them a ways. Because you are everywhere, but you still pass through to please, to please the child. to bring joy to her heart by each pass because you keep her dream alive and because you want to gift her this dream by which she grows bright and bright. And that's all, that's all there is to growing bright and bright. Now I would like to connect this synchronicity meeting through a teaching, And through the synchronicity of the book that has been completed today. So let me take the books here. So I wish to start that by the book, two books that I completed today, reading, and their flowery page that is in relation. This is The Big Panda and Tiny Dragon by James Norbury, which I have been dearly gift gifted, which to which I'm grateful. And this is page 14 of spring, which matches to this time. And Tiny Dragon says, I'm too busy to see the flowers right now, said Tiny Dragon. All the more reason to look at them, said Big Panda. And they might not be here tomorrow. So this very page, they are page by page jewels here. Uh, likewise stimulated me to quickly set up this meeting today. And this is the page I have been reading. And the teaching I would like to share today is about how to make 
flowers from light. Uh, which I have been reading and which I believe perfectly matched again to the synchronous intention of this blossoming. So this is the introduction, page by uh, in Vidyan Bhairava, which is uh, my a lifetime study book for me, besides others. And I learn on synchronicity a lot through the reading of these. Here then we will, uh, I will just like to read from the book. From the Uchara of the general prana, there vibrates an imperceptible, inarticulate sound, which is known as Varna. Uchara is the natural characteristic of prana. Uchara means expression in the form of nada, or sound subtle, inarticulate, or unmanifest and moving upward. The unmanifest inarticulate sound or nada is known as varna. Abhinava Gupta says in Tantra Loka 5131, from the ujjara of the general prana, there vibrates an imperceptible inarticulate sound, which is known as varna. There is none who sounds it voluntarily, nor can anyone prevent its being sounded. The deity abiding in the heart of the living creatures sounds it himself. Abhinava Gupta gives the following description of this nada. There is one varna in the form of nada, which means sound vibration, in which lie all the varnas, letters, latently, in an undivided form. So I have also named it as a sound embodied form in my words for the research that I'm doing on creative movement or indeterminate movement or natural movement, if you will. As it is ceaseless, poseless, it is called anahata, unstruck, natural, spontaneous, uncaused, as all the varnas or letters originate from this nada, therefore it is called varna proletically. How are we to know about this inarticulate sound? There are two ways in which this pranic mantra can be utilized for the awakening. One is amshandana, that means prolonged mental awareness. So the suggestion is through the movement, taking the seat comfortably while the movement of the body is in its own natural course and gazing 
through through the sensibilities we can say which covers sensualities which covers designations and their awareness of it which covers all the labels that arises and the no labels that is being conceptualized about with the open eyes where inner and outer unites and this we achieve which is not an achievement but a natural way of being through repetition through the repetition of the moving body the repetition of the moving body is the very initi initialization initiation of the hearability of its mantra and of the assignment of sounds to particular parts of the body that which makes the sound hearable by the embodier of the movement or you may call it the performer that which is not record recordable however yet the form can be tested through its unitary dispositions whence the totality of the inner eye has been completed the sound is going to be dissolved into light that which makes flowers made of light and this i will continue reading i found here also thus again synchronously today A time comes when the japa or the repetitive sacred formula that is hearable to the performer of it does not depend on the will and activity of the reciter any longer. So that I have mapped to the movement of the body. It now goes on automatically inwardly without any effort on the part of the reciter. It becomes an ajapa japa. When this proceeds for a long time, the prana and the apana currents that normally move in a curvilinear way on the Ida and the Pingala channels become equally created. The equilibrated current now flows upward in the Shushumna. That means to say, in the interior of the spinal column. So, on the next session, I will also like to suggest then a presentation of some of my extracted curves, which can uh, be, which have been extracted through a uh, different reference points but which causes a totality of the body and which can be reinstalled and initialize a total brand new movement which are valid in themselves as an anushandana as has been suggested before 
So this flows upward in the Shushumna, in the interior of the spinal column. This upward movement is known as Ucharana. Prana and manas, which mind, are so closely associated that manas also acquires upward orientation along with it. As the Kundalini rises, there is the experience of Anahata Nata, uh, Nara, automatic, unstruck sound. This passing through the various chakras finally joins the Brahmaranda, Brahmaranda, and then Nara ceases. Nada ceases, it is then converted to Gyoti, light. So this is uh, Vigyan Bhairava, the introductory verse, uh, sorry, not verse, the introductory page, uh, which I found parallels in my research or uh, experiential uh, there's the experiential uh, testing and understanding and research about the subject of this movement, which is whose performance cannot be determined, yet be gifted to particular movements to the researcher in their research. And here, today I completed this book by Thich Nhat Hanh, Inside the Now, and Meditations on Time, and also this curve, where, which is a dot, which is an expansion, which is a map of all pervasions, which is a unition of dots, and which is the projection of all sound embodied form, of all sound embodied forms into the sky, which is looking very much like the shape of the middle of the heart, of the eye, of a totality of the point. There is more and more for all of us inspiration, you know, uh, circularities, but I shall uh, end this talk with a poem from this book by its author, April, that is page 26. The sun is up. One of your tiny petals carries a dewdrop imitating the sun shining forth. The forest doesn't seem to know you are there, although you have already begun to sing your immortal song. A song that sounds as if it has been there forever. In the solemn atmosphere of the deep forest.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 